This is London, but broadcasting to you, of course, all over the world. Thanks to the wonders of the internet, uncontained, uncontrollable, ultimately. Please note, we are on sputniknews.com. We are on FM in the Washington, D.C. area of the United States of America. 105.5 are the magic numbers there. We're on AM across America from coast to coast. But this is a radio show with pictures, and many, maybe most of you, are watching this on screen now. If you're watching on Facebook, Please share, 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 because I predict this will be another one million viewer audience this evening. Plus, of course, the listeners that can't be counted, but are just as significant to us. You can find it on my own Facebook, George Galloway Official, Blue Tick. You can find it on my YouTube, George Galloway Official. You can find it on my Twitter account. A remarkable number of people are now following us on Twitter. Not just the well over a third of a million following me, but now following the new uh, uh, Moats account, which is called Moats TV. So no longer GG Moats, it's Moats TV. Go to it now and follow it, please. And uh, of course, you can watch on RT's own portals. Uh, the RT UK News, the RT.com, and many others. There are plenty of ways to tune in, and more and more of you are doing so, despite the fact, or maybe because of the fact, that the world does indeed seem to be spinning out of control, an apocalypse looming in the near distance. Let's start in China where well, their new year, Kung Hei Fa Choi, has begun. The year of the rat and the year of the coronavirus. The Chinese response to this epidemic has been stupendous and could not have been done by any other country or system in the world. That's where I stand. I can do no other. So help me God. Amen. I say it because of this. Who else could build a 1,000-bed hospital in five days? In Britain, we're still talking about the building of HS2, supposed to cost 30 billion, now costing 100 billion, and no longer going north of Birmingham. 100 billion to shave 12 minutes off the trip from London to Birmingham. And it's already years, years behind schedule. The Chinese have done this, and they have locked down hundreds of millions of their own people to try and check the spread of this deadly virus. Q accusations that China is behaving in an authoritarian way. If they had done nothing, of course, if they had treated it like a normal country, they would have been accused of willful irresponsibility in allowing a deadly virus which may kill millions of people to spread around the world. But the sheer scale of China is also demonstrated in this story. Most people watching and listening had never heard of the city of Wuhan, which has 11 million people living in it. And those people spread out across the world as students on business and as tourists. And that's why cases are now popping up all over the world. China's strong central state, its planned economy, makes it the best country in the world to handle this virus. Ask yourself this, could the British Health Service possibly stand up to an event of this magnitude? I think you already know the answer to that. You certainly know it in America because you don't have a health service, although you might come November because Bernie Sanders has just moved into a decisive lead for the Iowa caucuses, the first test of the Democratic Party's process of picking an opponent of Donald Trump. He's promising to introduce a health service. And that's just one of the reasons why I'm praying that he is victorious in Iowa and beyond. We'll be talking to the incomparable Chris Hedges about Bernie Sanders' campaign, but also about the trial now underway in Washington, D.C., 
of President Donald J. Trump now fighting for his political life. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that he would survive that Senate trial. He certainly hasn't. He's been going completely berserk on Twitter. More tweets, more berserk tweets, more bonkers tweets, more raving insanity from a president of the United States than anyone in the wildest fiction could ever have imagined possible. Speaking of fiction and speaking of the coronavirus, I'm now tuned in to a wonderful universal TV series called Condor. I'm only on episode three, uh, but the issue uh, that arises from that film is the spread of deliberately engineered diseases into the civilian population. Imagine how topical that is. If you haven't caught up with it yet, I strongly advise you to do so. We'll be talking also about the Labour leadership stakes, which are still travelling at a snail's pace, or maybe a donkey walking along Blackpool Beach. But the contest has heated up to some extent with the abandoning ship by Jess Phillips. As uh, someone involved with a rival political party, I was kind of hoping Labour would pick her because that would, en would deliberately uh, engineer the exodus of thousands, maybe tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of Labour Party members. That's not to be. But the contest uh, between Keir Starmer and Rebecca Long Bailey is definitely sharpening. And the contest for Labour's deputy leadership is equally sharp. We'll be talking to, again, the incomparable Chris Williamson, former Labour Member of Parliament for Derby North, witch-hunted, expelled grotesquely, unfairly from the Labour Party about that and about his plans for the future. He's founded a new a political grassroots movement, not a party, but a grassroots movement. I'll be asking him all about that. We'll be talking uh, to Patrick Henningsen about the state of play in Belmarsh Jail, where a group of convicts, yes, convicts, finally persuaded the Belmarsh prison authorities to treat the world's greatest publisher, the world's greatest whistleblower, the world's finest journalist, Julian Assange, as a human being. Imagine. And the British expert at the OPCW has blown the whistle and said that the chemical shell uh, which was found at the scene of the crime in Douma had neither been dropped from the air nor fired as a projectile, but had been deliberately laid down there and allowed to seep out. It is an extraordinary story, not least because nobody knows about it, because a complete blackout in the British media about a British chemical weapons expert, a member of the OPCW a team of specialists has blown the whistle on what is a war crime. It is a war crime to fake a chemical weapons attack as a provocation to set the world on fire. No wonder, if you think about it, they're keeping it quiet. No wonder they're keeping it quiet about what's happening in France, where for 63 weeks the yellow vests have battled the French police and now joined by millions of French workers in a general strike. And we cannot get one moment of the footage on British television, except on RT UK. I don't know what it's like in the United States, but I'm willing to bet there's no footage of what's happening in France every single day, every single weekend. It's a blackout. It's a deliberate blackout. And when you think about it, you can understand it. But it certainly kills the idea for any fools out there that still believed it, that in any way the so-called mainstream media is in any sense a proper media is in any sense free, is in any sense beholden to the public it pretends to serve. It's a conspiracy against the people. It's a conspiracy on behalf of those who 
rule us. And of course, even the internet is under pressure. Following the extraordinary success of my clips from last week, when I spoke about the madness of Scottish separatism, I have been subjected to a blizzard. I mean, a blizzard like I never saw in Scotland when I lived there most of my life. A blizzard of foul abuse and threats and cursing and swearing and bad words from people who are forever telling me how irrelevant and unimportant I am. I'm so irrelevant and unimportant, they're all watching and listening to this show right now and getting ready to write about it. Let me tell you, and I mean this most sincerely, folks, you've picked the wrong man to try and intimidate. You cannot silence nor intimidate me. And the more you try, not only will you strengthen my resolve to fight you, you will expose yourselves to the public in Scotland and beyond for the wickedness of your project and the wickedness of your conduct. Ditto uh, the issue uh, of Israel-Palestine. Israel-Palestine has been an issue for me from 1975, when I was 21 years old. I'm not going to shut up about it. You cannot stop me from talking about it. Neither can you intimidate me into taking a different position. The last word on my lips, if I can so engineer it, will be Palestine. I will stand up for the Palestinian people until God no longer gives me the breath to do so. And after me, my sons and my daughters, another one of whom, by the way, will be along in a minute. Yes, I'm having my sixth child, or rather, my good wife, Gayatri, is having it for me. Uh, but uh, I accept your congratulations. But I make the point, only this, that you will not stop me, even if you kill me. Even if you kill me, you will not stop me. Because if you kill me, my words will take wings and will fly farther and higher and reach more and more people. So stop it. The little boy, Kais, who was fished out of the water, was it a well? Was it a reservoir? Was it a flood? Was it a cistern? Who knows? All of these have been mentioned in the reportage. Was he pushed? Did he jump? Was he beaten? Was he kidnapped? I'm told it's a blood libel to say that the Israeli settlers, illegal, armed thugs, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of them, might have kidnapped and murdered this boy. Well, how can it be a blood libel? If they killed this little boy, they did not do so because they were Jews. They did not do so even because they were Israelis. They did so because they're settlers. They're European settlers who have seized by force and occupy somebody else's land seeking to drive them away. That's what settlers do when I denounce white settler apartheid in South Africa. It wasn't a blood libel against Dutch people, a blood libel against British people. It was, a, it was an accusation, a denunciation of apartheid, of the inadmissibility of seizing other people's territory by force and expelling them and oppressing them and killing them. Israeli settlers have killed, have thrown on fires, have put on the grill Palestinian child after child after child. Why is it so difficult for you to believe the initial reports that little Kais was kidnapped, beaten, and thrown into the water where the next day he was fished out, dead from exposure, and cold, still dressed in the coat his mother had sent him out in the day before at 4 p.m. to buy some pita bread from the store. Why would it be in any way a surprise if 
Israeli settlers, armed illegal Israeli settlers, had murdered him when they had murdered so many children before. In fact, together with the state of Israel itself, Israel has killed thousands of Palestinian children in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, thousands of them. So for those of you who say that this is somehow an attack on Jewish people, I say that script is wearing very thin. Just this week, we commemorated uh, the liberation of the death camp at Auschwitz. A liberation, moreover, carried out by the Soviet Red Army. If the Soviet Red Army had not torn the guts from Hitler's war machine, as Winston Churchill put it, there would have been no Jew left alive in Europe and quite possibly the world. No communist, no Roma, no disabled person, no homosexual person, no person who stood up to fascism would still be alive and I'd be speaking to you and very differently indeed in German. All hail the memory of the Red Army that liberated Auschwitz. Never again the Holocaust with a capital H, which killed two out of every three Jews in Europe. 40% of them Soviet Jews. It's funny that never gets mentioned. 40% of the Jews that were massacred were from the Soviet Union. Never again a Holocaust. Never again a Holocaust with a capital H. Never again a Holocaust with a lowercase h. It's the duty of every right-thinking person to speak out against oppression, to tremble with indignation against oppression anywhere, everywhere. This is the mother of all talk shows.